424 Chief Writer Rob Howing joins us in studio for our Monday morning sports wrap. This morning we're talking the Proteas versus England test at the Oval and the Super Rugby semi-finals. Rob, good morning. Thanks very much for coming in. Hello, Nick. I hope you're going to manage without your wingman this morning. I'm sure I will. <laughs> Let's start um, more pressingly with the pro tiers. Of course, 12 o'clock, uh, day five kicks off, and they really are up against it um, with uh, Dean Elga and Temba Bavuma uh, kind of writing the ship somewhat uh, late yesterday. But um, all round, I guess, a disappointing uh, bowling display and more importantly the top order batsmen for the pro tiers just uh, haven't delivered yeah i think uh, the word pressingly you used is uh, is quite apt uh, they've got a very pressing task on on day five uh, almost imp it's almost mission impossible um 588 deliveries uh, uh, is what they've got left in this match because it's not even your conventional 90 overs. Uh, they're still making up time from the weather interruptions from previous days' play. So it's it's a 98 over day. And as you know, in England in, in midsummer, if the weather's good, and the expectation was that it would be pretty good at the Oval for day five, unfortunately, if you're South African, um, it, it means that uh, light won't, probably won't be an issue. Um, mm. And 98 overs is what it is. Um, so a, a really gargantuan task uh, facing uh, what's left of the South African yeah. batting. Um, I think the best we can perhaps hope for, uh, in all honesty, is um, is just for some some real sort of grit th throughout the uh, you know what's left of the middle order and the tail, and drag the match as deep into the the day as as is possible. Bear in mind that the final test is virtually back to back. Um, it starts on Friday at Old Trafford, um, and if England were to bowl first in that test match, uh, you could say well that they had to bowl last uh, you know on on a, a busy final day perhaps at the Oval uh, so there could be a little bit foot sore but that's perhaps clutching at straws I mean there are there are some structural and other issues in the South African team at the moment mm -hmm. a little bit concerning how they've, they've uh, suddenly gone so violently from a brilliant performance at Trent Bridge to a, a pretty inept performance frankly you mentioned you know both the batting and bowling as issues and yes um, there, there are problems on both fronts uh, at, at this stage and at an inconvenient time when we really reach the business end of the of the the series um, so it's, it's back to advantage England unfortunately very much so you have to Imagine they're going to go two one up. Perhaps in our favour is the fact that um, the, the Bavuma Elga partnership, as you say, is, is does have the potential to, to mm. go a little bit further. There, there's great fight in both players. Mm. Um, both the of them two showed sh shortest guys on the field as well. <laughs> Absolutely, perhaps. and they're up against some of the tallest fast bowlers mm. in the world. Um, Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad, uh, big guys who know how to sort of bang it in, but they also know how to bowl that sort of you know kiss the deck length uh, that, that yeah. serves you so well. Uh, get the ball swinging in, in England. Um, maybe if it's sunny, um, then it won't seem swing around so much, uh, which is again mm. uh, another little straw to, to clutch at. But um, you know, South Africa are, have been up against it for the bulk of the Test match, and if they do go down, um, I'm afraid it would probably be a, a pretty deserved outcome. Um, and then, of course, all that's left at Old Trafford would be to to try to salvage uh, a two-all outcome. Although that's not enough to get the Basil Oliveira Trophy back, unfortunately. So uh, you know, um, uh, we're, we're deep in the pickle. Mm. Um, Algar could very well uh, go on to to hit a century, which um, I think that would be the first century from a South African in quite some time. But um, let's talk about Bavuma. It feels like Tamar Bavuma doesn't really get uh, the praise he deserves. And I don't know if that's because he's a middle order batsman and not a bowler. I mean, a very handy fielder. But he seems to be quite um, quite gutsy in situations like this. I mean, in the first innings, he was a top scorer. Yeah. Um, maybe because of the, the way he plays and, and his, uh, his height, he's quite a difficult batsman to get out. But also just his temperament is just very impressive, very calm. And um, what are your thoughts on, on his performances? Yeah, I was very pleased that I, I wrote a, a piece in the lead-up to the Test mm. match um, on the very subject of Bavuma, saying that here's an instance of a player who you mustn't look at too much in sort of cold statistics. It's still relatively early in his Test career. And remember that a certain Jacques Callis took some time mm. to sort of warm to the task of Test cricket. You, you have to sometimes invest in people, show patience. Uh, the, the signs he shows at the crease, uh, never mind the fact that he's, you know, he's still averaging in the sort of lower 30s, which we know ultimately mm. isn't enough. You know, he's got to hike that, and I think there's still a good chance that he will. Um, the English uh, scribes and critics have been very impressed with his his organisation. They, they mm. keep talking about the organisation of his game, and he looks technically like one of the better South African batsmen at the moment. Mm. In, in an order that uh, isn't isn't particularly convincing from a sort of technical and sort of um, you know f fortitude sort of point of view, mm. I suppose. Um, he's the one guy who's really sort of looked like a bit of a rock. Once once he's got mm. in, um, he's really glued himself to that crease. Um, he's played the ball. Um, you know, he hasn't sort of sparred at stuff that's that's uh, wide of his body. Um, he's, his balances look good. 
Um, and he's just, there's just a calmness about him, as you say, that, that sort of bodes well. And, and England sort of know that they've, uh, that they've got work to do to actually you know, unravel him. It might take a really good delivery to, uh, to unseat him. And uh, you know, he's followed up his first innings uh, performance uh, with, with uh, some, some decent runs already in, in, the, in the second innings. Mm. He'd obviously be wanting to, to take that score up well you know, beyond the, the 40s, 50s, and to prove that he can actually make big ones. Because he's only got the one century so far in his mm. career, that famous one at Newlands. Mm. Um, and you know, uh, he would be mindful that you, you, you do need to, as a sort of uh, you know, top or middle order batsman in test matches, you've got to make centuries uh, uh, you know, more often. And yeah. he'll be well aware of that. But uh, we know that he's got the ticker. Um, and I, I think they're, they're coming. I, I think that the, the big runs are still um, uh, very feasible uh, from, from the Babuma bat.